Good morning, everyone. Uh, so uh, my name is uh, Tristan Nito. I'm a French uh, citizen, and I'm chief product officer for a French startup called Cozy Cloud, which makes me the Cozy Cloud uh, chief product officer, which is C3PO, uh, which uh, still amuses me uh, two years and a half after uh, I got the title. Um, so today, I want to discuss how to make uh, PIMS a reality. Uh, without becoming what we're intending to replace, which is an example, uh, Google. So uh, a bit about my uh, background, I've spent 17 years in a project called Mozilla that gave us uh, Firefox right from the uh, very first day. I was uh, involved in this project and I became a founder of Mozilla Europe and then president for nine years. So I'm a big of an open source fan. Uh, you will see, it will show uh, in my talk. Um, and when I decided to leave Mozilla after 17 years, I uh, started writing a book, uh, which is actually uh, selling uh, pretty well. Its name is Surveillance. It's available in French only unless uh, you get me in touch with the publisher that will publish it in uh, Finland, Estonia, uh, and or English somewhere. Uh, I'm very open. Um, and well, the, the name is about surveillance uh, capitalism, and uh, you will see there are a part related uh, to PIMS. And after I started writing the book, I joined uh, Cozy, which is an open source personal cloud solution. And there's a, a an arc between these three things is that I really loved working for Mozilla, but at some point I was very concerned about personal data uh, being handed over to Facebook and Google and, and such. So I was, I was passionate about building a browser that was serving the users, but basically we were putting the user's data into the wrong hands. And it was good on one side to be serving the user with an open source browser, and it was terrible that we were actually you know, pushing people in a software as a service thing, which in my opinion is very destructive uh, for the future of computing. And so this is why I ended up going on the, on the server side uh, with, uh, with Cozy. So in, in this book, um, I, I wrote, um, I developed a model of what would be a platform, and the word platform is very important, a platform that would serve the interest of users. What would be the principles behind such a platform? So um, this pla it, it contains seven principles which are listed here, of course, they're just keywords, so we will need to explain. And I don't have time to go through all seven of them, uh, but I'll go through uh, a, a few of them, four exactly. Uh, four to be very practical today about what makes PIMS uh, a reality. The, the lack, well, the business model in general and the fact that we should not rely on targeted advertising. Uh, the way uh, where we host our data having control of the, over the hardware to host the data, the fact that it must be open source software, um, and finally, uh, the need for killer features. So the first one is the business model. I really love this pigs on the side discussing the free model. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, the pigs are not the customers of the farmer. Uh, it's something we need to remember every day because usually when I go to a conference, I ask people, are you customers of Google and Facebook? And everybody, you know, raise hands. Of course I am a customer of Google and Facebook. But no, you're pigs in a digital world. You're not the customers of the pharma. Uh, so targeted advertising is not the option if you want uh, to make money in a PIMS world. Why? Because it means you are tracking everything that the user does and you sell the data. And if you do that, you're doomed. It's your, you're becoming the next Google, basically. Um, yet, Google and Facebook and the likes, the internet giants that I call them, or the GAFAs if you want, uh, competing with them because they're free is really hard. So we need to find a way uh, to develop the platform 
pay for the developers, but also pay for the hosting in a way that is, uh, is good and aligned with the, the user's interest. Um, the, the approach we've been using with Cozy is, um, is a mix of these things. First, the freemium approach, which is dual. You offer a, a solution which is free, but it's limited, and you uh, encourage users to pay for a more expensive, well, more expensive, but more powerful version. Uh, and you know, the, the ones who pay also pay for uh, the ones who use the service for free. Um, and it could be paying for more storage or more features. Um, we'll see uh, in the future how we, uh, this goes. Um, another way is convincing brands and businesses to subsidize the cost of the platform. Uh, brands could uh, offer or give the price of the uh, hosting to their clients saying, you should use this. It's not under my control, but I pay for it. And, and there, uh, you will have your data safe, and it's useful for also for me as the brand, and it's also useful for you as a, as a user. Um, and also, there are hosting companies uh, we are already working with uh, in France that want to offer Cozy as part of their offering for money. You rent a server, a virtual private server, a different kind of server, and for a slight additional amount of money, you get Cozy installed and running on that. And you pay, you rent for the server, and that's, that's understood. Or each year, you pay for a domain name, and you have Cozy installed. So you pay, and for just a amount of money, you have uh, an inexpensive version of Cozy. And if you pay more, you have like a freemium approach. You have a better, you more storage, more features, etc. That's the way we deal for not having uh, uh, targeted advertising as the business model. Issue number two is controlling where the instance is running. So we, the, the, this thing on the, on the right is, is, is a Raspberry Pi Model 3B. It costs 39 euros, and this is a computer. Uh, you can actually run Cozy uh, on it. So if you're uh, excited enough and smart enough and knowledgeable enough, you can run your own instance. You can self-host your data at your place. There are, of course, hidden costs. Apart from buying the hardware, which is cheap, then you have the time dedicated to maintain it and making sure it's secure and all of that. Uh, but it's the price of being completely independent. But it's possible. I'm pretty sure 99% of people will choose a managed version of that. But it is extremely important to be able to say, I am not happy with my hosting provider I want to move my data back to my place and really own it and really have control over it. So uh, this, is, this is why we, we think people will go for an easy way, easy solution, which is just you know, pay a small amount of money and have a professional run the service for them. But we need people to be able to say, I want to leave. I want to own the thing. I want to control everything. Um, and also, we want to be able to have several of offers. So if you're not happy with one provider, you can move to another provider. And your data will follow you, and you will close your account in the previous one, because you trust the second more than the first one. So that's, that's very important. Otherwise, we're, well, we, we would be becoming the next Google. right? So we, we do not want to have uh, to force people to stay in one location that we control. Number three issue is using open source software. And I can't state this loudly enough. We have to use open source software for the platform. Why is that? It's because open source is auditable. It is transparent. Maybe you don't have the knowledge to read the code, but someone else, because the code is public, someone else, maybe you will pay for it, but you, 
that person will be able to audit the code for you and say, yes, this thing does what it says it does. If you want to have trust, that's one key thing you need to have, open source code. There is no other way around. And this is why we say we cannot be evil. It's even printed on the back of our business cards. We can't be evil because the code is ed auditable and we do not control it forever. If Cozy starts uh, screwing up uh, with the code and doing silly things people are not happy with, they will be able to fork the code, take the code, make a copy of it, and run their own version that we do not control. So you don't have to trust us. You can make sure what we do is, is actually what we say we do. And if, we, you're, if you're not happy, you can kick, make a copy of the code and run your own. So we can't be evil. I'll skip over uh, the other uh, topics in, uh, for the sake of time, but I want to mention the, killer, the need for killer features. Why is that? Well, people have to say they don't really like Google and Facebook and the like, but they still stay there because it's the best thing that they have. So if you want to convince them to come to a platform when they have control over personal information, you have to offer something that really is not possible with existing players. There must be something that is really cool. And we need to find what. And I'll, I'll explain you uh, what, what we're working on at, uh, at Cozy. Uh, basically, we have two kinds of uh, people we talk to, consumers, or individuals, or users, however you want to name them. Uh, and the, the first one uh, is, we, we tell them, you have frictionless access to data. And there is a second population with other brands and the partners and the, and the companies. Um, so right now, I want to show you how, you, how making frictionless access to data uh, is, is really cool. Uh, we all have data. Uh, it's somewhere in my phone. Sometimes it's uh, on, you know, it's bills at an e-commerce provider uh, or stuff like that. It's located everywhere. We want to concentrate it, um, and and so you have access to it, and you can navigate it uh, locally quickly without, you know, the the uh, sort of uh, passwords and such. So how do we uh, do that? Well, this is this is cozy. Um, so. Uh, I have my uh, personal, you can't read it here, but this is my personal uh, address. And I'll pretend to be uh, Isabelle Durand uh, today for this uh, presentation. Um, and it's a personal cloud, just like a smartphone is, is personal. On a smartphone, you don't enter your user ID. You enter a password, and maybe it's your fingerprint, or just an, a code, or or a pattern, but it's personal. So we don't ask who you are. We just ask, do you have the password? If you do, then you're logged in. And you enter uh, Cozy. And in Cozy, you have something which is really powerful, which is what we call uh, uh, Cozy Collect. It's a set of connectors that allow you to uh, fetch your data from your commercial uh, partners, and pretty much from everywhere. And because we are open source, these connectors can be written either by Cozy or by a community of open source enthusiasts that share the connectors. Um, so uh, this is the French social security. Uh, these are uh, mobile and ISPs, uh, same here. Electricity provider, insurance, e-commerce website, uh, insurance, uh, the French Post and its digital services and such. And it could be, uh, you know, e-commerce, telecom, transportation, whatever. We have uh, literally dozens of these connectors. Um, and here is how it works. So for the EDF, the electricity uh, provider, uh, you enter your uh, login and password for this service. And the connector, depending on the connector and the type of enterprise you connect to, you can collect here your bills, your contracts, your consumption, 
electrical consumption because it says electricity, uh, your client profile, and your home information. Uh, on some other connectors, it's just collecting bills as PDF. It really depends on what kind of data is available uh, on the service. You have applications because it's a platform. So you have a set of applications and you can add applications that you or someone else uh, will write. It could be professionals, it could be third parties, it could be open source enthusiasts that will create and write applications that will run on the Cozy. So actually, Cozy is limitless in its possibilities because you can write applications that run on a platform and access personal data. Uh, so this is an example of an application which is the uh, uh, bank, uh, uh, PFM, Personal Finance Manager, uh, running on Cozy. You have uh, several accounts running. Um, I'm sorry, this is in French because I had submitted before it was translated. Now it's available in English. Um, and uh, so here's the amount of money uh, I have on my bank account overall, the credit I use, number of operations, and all the list of expenses I've done here with the amount. And you can see here, blue links on the right. And this is uh, Bouygues Telecom, which is a telecom operator, a mobile operator. Here's the amount of money I've spent. And I can click here, which says, access the bill. And when I do, I am sent to uh, this my bill, which is uh, collected as a PDF, which is displayed. So this is where the frictionless piece is, is really cool for people, is that I am seeing my expenses, and when I click on them, I can see the bill, and I have access to details about that expense. And another key feature for uh, users is uh, combining data sources. So it's not about moving from data to data easily, it's also combining data together and give aggregated data that is useful and unactionable uh, for me. So we uh, wrote a dedicated app. Um, I will show, uh, I will demo this this afternoon in a use case uh, session, so please come and attend because it's going to be uh, a lot more explicit and interesting. But basically, we use connectors from several sources, from the bank and the social security and additional insurance, gather data from all three places and track what are your expenses and how well you are reimbursed uh, by the states and by the insurance. Makes it, of course, a money saver uh, for the individual that, of course, pays uh, for, for the, 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 the price of the uh, cozy uh, instance. So an, another uh, type of uh, people we talk to are companies and brands, um, and we, we offer them uh, solutions. We want them to build applications. And why would they want that to do? Well, because with applications that run on Cozy, they can access data without getting a copy. What I love earlier in the presentation we had uh, this, this morning is that data can be a liability. Yes, some people think data is the new oil, but in some cases, data may be a radioactive material. Data can be uranium. It can be a liability to have so much data about so much people. Because maybe one day you'll get hacked and you will leak that data and you'll get into very big trouble. So having this data not stored on your servers as a brand, but located um, in a place where we call the data DMZ, in a safe place where you can have a look at it without getting a copy of it. If you have an application that runs on a Cozy, it can access data without getting a copy of the data. Um, and so by this, you know your customers a lot better and you can compete with internet giants who have already a lot of data about your customers. And also, as GDPR is coming, it enables you to be more, a lot more agile with data without having to uh, reinvent your full IT infrastructure that you know, is uh, humming along in the background. And this is the kind of thing you, you probably don't feel too comfortable uh, changing so quickly. So it's hard to compete with internet giants because they know everything about customers. Uh, if you think about Google, they have agendas, they know GPS position, 
they know what people think about because they have a search engine and you have a, when you have a question, well, you ask Google. Um, so they have a lot of information, a lot more than you will ever have. And either you become the next Google or the next Facebook, and good luck with that, uh, or you change the rules of the game. And the rules of the game is really pushing the PIMS movement. It's encouraging individuals to, have, to own their own data and then ask them the permission to access the data through an application. In this, you will be able to compete. You will have digital intimacy. You'll be close to your customers because you'll be, you'll, you will be close to their data. And also, uh, well, I, like I said, the GDPR, uh, it, it's really cool. But for brands, it could be a threat. What about if Amazon asks you, a retailer, uh, what your customers have been uh, providing? And it, this sounds crazy, but actually, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you go to LinkedIn or Facebook, they ask you to access your Gmail account to get your contacts. And people say, yes, I'll give you my contacts. And now, if you are, I don't know, a big, big retailer, uh, you can imagine Amazon says, oh, can you give me your uh, password for that uh, big retailing brand so I can access your history of purchases? It's free. It's cool. We will serve you better with that. It's going to happen. This is, this is the scary part of GDPR. Um, and so either you do nothing and you get eaten alive, or you go the PIM's way, and by subsiding uh, a cozy instance, you will empower people to gather they, they, their data and do something, including Amazon, um, Amazon data. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, cozy for partners, leveraging the GDPR instead of uh, fearing it. Also, privacy by design you will interact with users with their data without getting a copy of the data. It means that you respect their privacy, yet you have more intimacy. That's a, that's a bit of the, a, a good paradox here. You increase uh, customer trust uh, and agility, not involving your IT uh, stuff that it took decades to, to write and, and maintain, but being agile in a world where it's needed and compete with the internet giants. So really, two sets of people, consumers on the left and corporate partners on the right. Um, and and as, as you go from the bottom to the top, you will see, oops, sorry. Uh, you'll see Cozy is just, just a drive to share your files between your devices, but you can add connectors and automation to fetch documents giving you more privacy in control, etc., and having innovative services in the end, like uh, uh, health data re uh, reimbursement. And for corporate partners, it's preventing internet giants from disrupting your business to access data that was unreachable before. This is it uh, for now. I'll encourage you to come later if you want to see uh, the use case uh, later this afternoon uh, about uh, data, uh, health data reimbursement. It's going to be uh, very cool with a demo and, uh, and all of that. Thank you very much.